How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Today we're going to be having a look at this cute little little light. It's by GVM. It's called the 80W and it's basically a very very stripped down version of the Aperture 120D with a slightly different output and only one button on the back. One little potentiometer but a lot of brightness. Why is it hot on my own? Why am I not now when I say bare bones I mean like really bare bones. It doesn't even have a carry case. It came in a cardboard box with some foam inserts to keep it in place during shipping. But that's it. Like the, there's no case to carry this around in. It came with this nice reflector, which um, seems like it borrows heavily from Aperture's new design for their reflector, which is designed to really maximize lumen output uh, when you are using the reflector so that you have as little spill and waste as possible focuses all your light. Now the box that I got also happened to come with this trusty GVM lightweight but somewhat sturdy light stand. It's better than most of the crappy aluminium ones that I've used before. And it also came with a little white umbrella that I have over there. But to be honest, those are both secondary items. The thing that interests me is the light itself and what it can do. Now when I say this thing is small, I mean, I'm not joking. The main body of the light, including the handle, is just under 23 centimeters. I'd give it an even 22. And it features a Bowens mount, which is pretty nice because if you have modifiers like these Godox softboxes that I have, you can use them. Now the controls on the back is literally just one clickable potentiometer. You click it to the left to turn it off. You click it again to turn it on and you just gradually increase that power. Now you'll notice there it's flickering. This is something that I've noticed with a couple of GVM products that I own. Uh, as well as other cheaper COB continuous lights like this one. Um, I think this is just when the LEDs are warming up because that flicker seems to go away very quickly once that LED panel is up to temperature um, and the heatsink starts to warm up with it. Now, another thing that I've noticed is that as you gradually increase this potentiometer, um, I mean, it is in no way gradual. You go from minimum brightness there, which is it's not very bright at all, but it still hurts my eyes to look at it, which is why I should probably stop doing that. But as you increase, it very quickly gets to pretty much its brightest. I mean, there going from almost halfway to there is barely, barely a fifth increase in brightness. And then from that halfway mark down, that's where you really notice that huge drop in lumen output. So it's not a very consistent potentiometer, which means that basically control of this light output is going to have to be sort of guesstimates. It's going to have to be a little bit of fiddling around. There's no remote control to dial in a specific value. You're just going to have to sit there and twizzle that knob until it looks how you want it. But again, it's a bare bones light. It doesn't have the fancy features that the Aperture 120D has. Now, one thing I really dislike about this light is the power supply. This just looks like a laptop power supply. Even the plug is that three pong kettle lead that it just, it's just a really awkward power supply to have. I mean, it's, it's long, but not nearly long enough for any kind of production. And you've got about, about a meter, a meter of cable between the power supply unit and the light, which means you just have to kind of suspend this or duct tape it or gaffer tape it or something tape it to a light stand, which is just a bit of a pain. Okay, now onto sound. I have the microphone literally just out of shot right there. Now this is a shotgun mic mounted on a boom pole. So it is pointing directly down at my mouth, which means that the fan is about a foot and a half away from the microphone. Now this is really not a realistic experiment because this is gonna show you what the sound is like if you were pointing a microphone at it, a foot and a half away from it which no one would do. I really hope you wouldn't do that. But anyway, here is the amount of sound that it produces. That's that's pretty quiet. I've got to say the uh, the Aperture 300D is much louder than that. It's about on par, I'd say, with the 120D. So right now I'm being lit by the Aperture 120D through this Godox Octobox that I have with a grid on it. So let's just swap these out. I'll put this on a power that balances the exposure correctly so that they're roughly the same and we'll see just what it gives. Okay, 
This is the GVM 80W. It's actually at about just under half power, surprisingly. Um, the Aperture 120D was at 85%. Let me turn this up to full power and see how see how bright it is, and then I'll put the Aperture 120D back on and put that up to full power and contrast and compare those two. But this is meant to have a pretty high color rendering index, so the CRI number of 95 plus is gonna give you really, meant to give you anyway, uh, very nice even skin tones. You're not gonna start getting purple fringing and purple uh, fall off on your skin tones. So this should be giving me some pretty decent skin tones. It shouldn't be giving me this kind of purple hue or greenish hue. Okay, let me turn it up. So this is at just under half and now going full blast. That was pretty bright. Pleasantly surprised there. Now let's do another audio test just now that it's mounted over there off camera instead of, you know, foot and a half underneath the microphone. I'd happily use that in the production. Hands down, that is a little bit louder than the 120D, but not much. Certainly a completely negligible amount if you're using it like this, about a meter and a half away from me, meter and a half away from a directional microphone. God, that is bright. Right, let me switch out the 120D now and put that at full power and we can compare it to these two screens. Okay, this is the 120D at full whack. Let's side by side these. Now, just from that segment of having this light on at full blast, this ring here is obviously the heatsink because it is hot as hell. That's, I can't keep my hands on that for too long. And that, yeah, that whole metal element there is the heatsink. And that is a point of concern because heat is dangerous when you're using modifiers and big plastic things. You know, if you're in a production where you're using gels, where you have this light on for an extended period of time, like a couple of hours, just to get that shot and you need to light it and all that, and, and this, this light is on for a couple of hours, I would be a little bit weary of how hot it gets. So why don't we run a little experiment? I will put this on the light stand they provided. I'll just use the reflector because I don't want to risk actually burning any of my soft boxes. Um, I'll just put it on here and see. Let's run it at full power for 20 minutes and see what, uh, what kind of heat this thing generates. Okay, well, uh, we got to nine minutes in at full power and the thing shut off. So I'm guessing it overheated. Yeah, that is, that is hot. That is so hot. So nine minutes in at full power, it overheats and shuts off. Now it's been off for a minute, minute and a half. Okay, so it cooled down enough to be able to turn it back on. But I bet you if I bring it back up to full power, leave it on for a couple more seconds, it can't have lost that much heat. It should shut off again, I would imagine. Or maybe not, I don't know. Point being that it does shut off eventually if you have it on at full power, which is a problem unless you don't use it at full power. Now, as I said, when I had it in the softbox there, it wasn't at full power. It was at about 40% power based on the potentiometer, not based on the actual output. So I don't really see a situation where in the studio, like here, I would need to use it at full power. But if you're planning on using this on a production, well, that might be a little bit more uh, bothersome. And I think just from the sheer amount of heat, this is this thing is still so hot. It's not leaving a mark on my desk, is it? No, this thing is still so hot. Um, I would be reluctant to put that through a softbox because these softboxes are designed for photography. They're not designed for constant light that gets incredibly hot. So you might find that it ends up damaging your modifier um, in a way that, you know, strobe photography just would never 
would never damage it that way. And of course you take that one step further and it actually becomes a fire hazard. So that is definitely worth keeping in mind if you are interested in this light. So basically it has too much power for its chassis, which means that its heatsink isn't capable of sinking enough heat and it ends up shorting those circuits temporarily until it cools down enough to be able to do it again. So it's certainly a very interesting light because it's so cheap and it's such a small package uh, and it just has the most basic functions possible really, just a dimmer. But it is not without its flaw and that flaw is a pretty major one if you're in a situation where you want to be able to use it at full power over an extended period of time. At lower powers it doesn't seem to be a problem at all, um, apart from that occasional flicker as those components warm up. But otherwise, no, a low power, it seems to it seems to last just fine. It seems to handle being in that softbox just fine. But really that high power thing, that's, that's gonna be a no-go for a lot of people. And that's just a real shame because it does offer a nice, clean, high color rendering index quality light that looks good on skin tones. It preserves the actual color of skin tones. So I leave it to you to decide whether you think this is a light that you would want to invest in because it is a fairly cheap investment to have this amount of output with a Bowens mount on a COB light. And for that price to be able to use this at 50%, 60% without it overheating, well, that's, that's pretty amazing. But if you want that full whack of power, I would suggest that you go for something a little bit better built like the Aperture 120D, which will manage that heat far better than the GVM does. All right, I hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this review and hit that subscribe button to get more videos like this from DoD Media. There is a link to this light in the description if you're interested in checking it out. It's an affiliate link, which means that if you buy it using that link, a small commission will come to me to help support this channel. It won't cost you anything extra. I've also put a link to the Aperture 120D in case you are more interested in getting that one or comparing them. I leave that up to you. See you in the next video.